Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and another episode of Tanya Tuesdays. So before we get into the video, I have to shamelessly bag myself. If you have a resume that's old, dry, boring, and it's just not giving, then hit me up on Instagram because I'm doing resumes for only $60. They are super cute. They definitely stand out against your competition. So hit me up if you're in need of a resume. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so today's video is going to be about self-care for nurses, mental health, mindfulness, gratitude, all that good stuff. And that is super, super, super important, especially as caregivers, we often put ourselves last because we care more about our patients and the job. And sometimes we just forget to care about ourselves. So this video is going to be my tips on how to practice self-care while at work. So my number one tip is to practice gratitude. It is so easy to just go with the flow and just work, 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 take care of patients, take care of patients, and just forget to take a step back and practice gratitude. Especially for me personally, I need to remind myself of how hard I work to become a nurse in the first place while I'm at work because sometimes it can get overwhelming and I find myself having to remind myself that I worked really hard to become a nurse. It was not an easy journey for me and that I need to be grateful for where I am right now and the fact that I did accomplish my goal of becoming a registered nurse and that there are a lot of people out there who are praying for that exact same thing to happen to them. They're praying to pass the NCLEX. They're praying to get into nursing school. They're praying to become a nurse and I have accomplished those things. So. I have to remind myself almost every shift that this is a, a blessing and this is something to be grateful for and that's something I should not take for granted. So that's one thing I think we all can um, benefit from and that's practicing gratitude. Even if you have to look at a photo of why, of yourself while you were in nursing school and while you were like struggling through tests and, uh, and all of these different things that we had to go through to really practice gratitude, do those things. And just doing that will really help you throughout the shift because it will just give you an, a positive outlook on where you are and just attract more positive things to happen to you. So tip number two is to use your lunch break as self-care. So for me personally, my lunch room is super small and a lot of the times, by the time I take lunch, which is usually like one o'clock in the morning, because I am a night shift nurse, by that time, I'm literally socially drained. Like, I don't feel like talking anymore. I don't really want to be around people. So my, for me, self-care would be to go to the other lunchroom where there's not a lot of people, not the one that's actually on the unit, but one that's pretty much, not even a minute walk, but just down another hallway, and going to that lunchroom and just sitting in quiet maybe putting on a podcast. I've been really into Law of Attraction Changed My Life podcast. I actually joined the Patreon, if you didn't see on Instagram. I love that podcast so much. It gets me all the way together. I'll be talking more about that later. But whatever whatever kind of lunch break I wanna have, I can like do that if I'm having my lunch alone, not really with everyone else, hearing everyone complain about patients and like, you know, just, all the negativity sometimes that happens naturally with the conversations with coworkers. So for me, self-care would be like to escape that and have lunch by myself. That might be the opposite for you. Maybe for self-care, you want to listen to music. Maybe you want to, you know, just do a couple deep breaths or meditate for five minutes. Whatever you have to do, use your lunch break to do that. And part two of this second point would be also to just choose your lunch wisely. So I know we all sh struggle with eating healthy, but I'm really trying to work on eating healthy because I know that like food either kills you or heals you. So I'm really trying to choose foods that heal me and not be eating chips and junk and like candy and soda and all of that on my lunch break. And that's pretty much what all my coworkers eat. So I really like 
that's just another reason why self-care for me would be like to go have lunch by myself because I don't really even want to be around those types of foods if I'm trying to be on a healthcare journey you know what I mean like I don't want to I don't really want to be around all that junk because I'm really trying to stick to it and it's kind of hard because I'm new at this and I'm like trying to move towards being plant-based and it's really hard if everyone around me is like eating junk so that's another that's a story for another day but anyway the point is to use lunch your lunch break as a self-care by also choosing foods that are actually good for your body and that will give you the energy to go through your shift and another thing is your food the food that you eat is almost directly related to your mental health too like you can't expect to be eating garbage 24 7 and think that you should have like a good mental health and physical health they go hand in hand so what we eat directly affects our mood and our thought processes sometimes i know that when i eat like fast food i almost feel groggy afterwards and it just puts me in a bad mood eventually so i definitely don't eat fast fast food on my um shifts but i do eat fast food on my days off and but i'm working on it all right (laughs) so yeah that's tip number two use your lunch as self-care okay so tip number three is to Be mindful of your thoughts during your shift. I find that a lot of the times we kind of bully ourselves in our mind sometimes. Like you might be doing something and you might make a a, a honest mistake and you'll just be like, oh, that was so stupid. Oh my gosh, I'm literally retarded. Oh my gosh, like I'm so slow. Like how did I forget that? And you just like don't even notice that you're bullying yourself in your mind you know what I mean and those thoughts can be so bad and just like put us in like a spiral and just make it hard for us to be positive so my tip number three is to be mindful of yourself and don't let yourself fall into that whole imposter syndrome thing and if you don't know what that is hold on let me let me read the definition I feel like a lot of us suffer from imposter syndrome especially us as new nurses I've only been a nurse for what six months now and it's just really hard sometimes to feel like I'm competent and you know because I don't know everything yet but slowly I'm realizing that even the most competent nurses don't know everything and that knowing knowing everything like the kind of nurse who thinks that she or he knows everything is actually a pretty dangerous person to receive healthcare from because it's impossible to know everything and nursing is one of those specialties where I mean careers where you're just always learning and things are always changing and you just have to be adaptable you can never think that you know everything so anywho so imposter syndrome is defined as feelings of self-doubt and personal incompetence that persist despite your education, experience, and accomplishments. So that's pretty much what imposter syndrome is. And it's just helpful to know that everyone experiences self-doubt at some point. No matter how experienced they are, no matter how confident they seem, we all experience moments of self-doubt and sometimes bully ourselves with our thoughts. But it's our job to be mindful of our thoughts and counter those thoughts. And it helps me to think of it like this it's basically those thoughts are from our subconscious which is basically trying to protect us so I just usually when those thoughts come up just thank my subconscious kind of like thank you but that's not true kind of thing and I just dismiss the thoughts and then I replace the thoughts with something positive so say I'm doing something and I'm like oh that was oh my gosh I'm so stupid I would be like wait no I'm not that's an honest mistake that a lot of people make and that does not mean that I'm stupid that's just an honest mistake and I will get better at it as I'm getting more experience as a nurse I would just realize that it is my subconscious trying to protect me and just know that my conscious mind overrides that and that I would be able to replace it with a more positive thought which is just that I'm still learning and that everyone makes mistakes and that I will you know get better at whatever the task is like whether it's you know putting in IVs or drawing blood or whatever the case is I know that I'm capable of mastering those skills it's just I'm a new nurse and I'm not gonna you know get it off the bat all the time 
but that doesn't mean that I have to bully myself in my thoughts, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's tip number two. No, that was tip number three. I'm about to lose count. Okay, tip number four is an easy one. Invest in whatever makes your shift easier. That is a form of self-care in itself. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing a video next week that's related to this, which is going to be Amazon must have for night nurses. And if you haven't already subscribed and like this video and comment down below what self-care tips you are going to be implementing, or if I left one out, comment down below your favorite self-care tip. So anyway, number four is to invest in whatever is going to make your shift easier. For me, that was like this pouch. It was, um... A good lunch bag um, it was my podcast that I told you guys that I listened to I listened to law of attraction pot change my life podcast I'm gonna link it down below because it has helped me tremendously in just staying positive and just I don't know it just it's just really entertaining and at the same time it's all about self-development and just being positive and using the law of attraction to attract good things into your life and all of that good stuff and i just love the podcast so much that i joined the patreon so that's something that i invested in that makes my work um life a little better because on my way to work i use that to mentally prepare myself and just come in with a positive vibration and you get the point so investing in whatever makes your shift easier is definitely a form of self-care there are certain things that you know will make your life easier. Just get them. We'll call it self-care. Just buy it. Order it. Just get it. Just get it. That's, that's the tip. So that's kind of related to tip number five, which is on the way to work, do whatever works for you in order to raise your vibration. So you want your vibration to be as high as possible when you walk into work. You want to just be attracting, you know, a, a good shift, attracting, you know, good things to happen during the shift, attracting energy levels to be high throughout the shift, especially with night shift. It's really hard to keep your energy all the way up throughout the a whole for a whole 13 hours, but I'm getting used to it and I think I'm doing a pretty dang good job, hence why I'm doing this video. But anywho, what helps me is to um, listen to my podcast on the way to work. Um, be snacking in the car, you know, dr be hydrated. I drink, I like to drink coconut water on my way to work. I fill up a huge big jug and just drink coconut water all the way on the way to work. So I'm not like, you know, if it is really busy and I don't get to drink water for a while, at least that I was hydrated right before. Just all those kinds of preparation things are really helpful to have a good shift and to um, practice self-care during the shift. This is definitely individualized. I know some people like to listen to music and that raises their vibration. Um, whatever that means for you, whether that is maybe exercising before, you go, some people are really into the gym. If you're really into the gym, maybe going to the gym before you go to work would like give you a little energy boost before you start. Whatever works for you, definitely do that to raise your vibration before work and to just mentally prepare for the shift. So that your shift just goes by smoother and it's all positive vibes. So tip number six is paying attention to your mind and your body. So I kind of spoke about this earlier in the video where you have to pay attention to your thoughts and, you know, not to let yourself fall into the whole imposter syndrome spiral where you start bullying yourself and all of that, but also paying attention to your body. I noticed that when... Uh, um, I'm nervous like I clench my jaw or like I tense up or you know all of those kinds of things some people get sweaty some people you know um, clench their hands whatever the case is just be paying attention to your body during your shift and whenever you get to those points of anxiety you just have to release it release your jaw release the tension in your body and just take a deep breath even if that means just stepping into the supply closet for two seconds and just deep breathing, even for 15 seconds, it would literally help. Do that whenever you have to do that. But it, the first step in, in this, this process would be realizing it in the first place. So you have to make a conscious effort to pay attention to your body and pay attention to your thoughts. And that will really, really, really help you get through your shift in a more... A less self-deprivating type of way if that makes sense like 
you don't want your shift to be like a self-sacrifice you know what i mean like your shift is not a nursing on a whole does not mean that you have to self-sacrifice you don't have to lose sleep you don't have to you don't have to lose your mental health you don't have to um you know not take care of your your body and all of that like that's kind of normalized in our culture i feel in the nursing culture i feel and i'm not about that life at all i will always be taking care of myself and if it ever gets to a point where you know the job is requiring me to self-sacrifice my mental health and my body and you know my well-being i would quit hands down like i would quit like she's a runner she's a track star she gonna quit that job when it gets hard like i will go i will be gone because at the end of the day i love myself too much to sacrifice myself for any job whether that's nursing or you know any other job i just won't do it so that's a part of self-care and it's in in another way too but yeah that's pretty much my video on self-care those are the six tips one practice gratitude two use your lunch as self-care three don't bully yourself four invest in whatever makes your shift easier five on the way to work mentally prepare yourself in whatever that way means whatever that means to you five on the way to work mentally you prepare yourself and set the tone for your shift and six pay attention to your body release tension and do deep breaths while when you need to so that's the end of my video guys if you haven't already subscribe and like this video and stay tuned for next tuesday next tuesday will be my amazon must-haves for night nurses definitely stay tuned for that because i have some goodies to share with you guys that have made my shifts much easier so i will see you guys in my next video next tuesday